a French plait or a normal one? Normal. If I put it in a plait at night, it doesn't get tangled. Good idea. Where's the bobble? It was on the kitchen table. Oh, has it fallen on the floor? No. You didn't leave it in your suitcase? No, I unpacked everything and put it in the spare room. Perhaps they're here again. Who? The borrowers. What are borrowers, Grandma? Little people. The size of a part-used pencil. They borrow things from human beings. Like what? Cotton reels, safety pins. I had 50 hair bubbles for my birthday. <laughs> How many have you got now? Three. Two. Mum keeps buying them and they disappear. Like handkerchiefs. And blue tack. And hat pins. What's a hat pin? Ladies used to stick them through their hat to hold it on. What do borrowers want hair bubbles for? They might use one as a belt. Or a catapult. Mm. A handkerchief could be a bed sheet. And a hat pin's a useful weapon for a borrower. There aren't really borrowers, are there, Grandma? I'll have to leave your hair down. Have you ever seen one? When I was a little girl, an old lady lived in our house called Mrs May. Why? Oh, she was some sort of relative. She told me about them in the beginning. Her brother Robert said he saw them when he was about ten or eleven. Really? Three of them. Pod, Homily and Arietti. <laughs> Everything they had was borrowed. From people? Even their names. They thought they had different names to human names, but they were borrowed too. Why were they so small? Because they were frightened. I feel small when I'm frightened. And the more frightened they felt, the more they hid away, and the smaller each generation became. What were they frightened of? Of us. Of what we might do to them. Where did he see them? Not far from here. Robert had rheumatic fever and went to stay with his great-aunt Sophie. What's a great-aunt? A great-aunt is your grandma's sister, so my sister would be your great-aunt. Robert's great-aunt Sophie was bedridden, and the only other human beings in the house were the cook, Mrs Driver, and Crampfurl, the gardener. When was this? Oh, a long time ago. About a hundred years ago. There was a grandfather clock in the hallway of the house that struck each hour, even through the night. It hadn't stopped for more than 80 years, and it was never moved. And under this clock, below the wainscot, was a hole. That was yours. Don't fly away. Are we ready? Peck him back. You wasted my kitchen looking out of that grating. They're fighting over birds from the azalea bush. You'll fetch me a potato from the storeroom. Birds don't have to go and fetch potatoes. Birds don't get a nice bowl of vegetable soup for supper. And they can live outside instead of under human beings' floorboards. Us clocks have always lived under the kitchen floorboards. Potato. There was no grating where I lived when I was a girl, and we were happier for it. Come on, you great lump. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to the potato. There was no talking to potatoes when I was a girl. Wouldn't have to talk to potatoes if I could go out. We were too busy. Run in the grass and feel <gasps> sun on me that isn't chopped into little squares by the grating. No, I haven't sat down today and I've still got the supper to cook. Who do you think sweeps and cleans and wallpapers the sitting room and makes your clothes? Here it comes. Ugh. doing? I got the potato. You nearly knocked me into the soup with it. Sorry. Oh, I don't want the whole thing. I meant cut a slice. Pass me the half nail scissor. I didn't know how much. I'll show you. Oh, this potato's ruined now. You can't roll it back through the dust once it's been cut. There are plenty more. Your poor father risks his life every time he borrows a potato. I meant in our storeroom. It's like magic to you. Potatoes appear in soup on the table. What are you doing now? 
write in my diary. Oh, read me the saying for today. You may go farther and fare worse. Oh, that's true. When you've finished, come and slice this onion ring into the thimble. March the 22nd. Your father's late. Mother worried. It's that teacup you broke. That was days ago. I know. It's not you, it's me. It's what I said. What? I said, what about the rest of the tea service? In the doll's house, in the top of the nursery cupboard. What's wrong with that? You have to climb up to it by the curtain. Oh. Here, slice this onion ring for the soup. Uh, he can't climb a curtain at his age. With his pin, he could. Well, that's what I said. Take a hat pin. Tie a bit of name tape to the head and pull yourself up. Your mother's a selfish woman, Arietti. Oh, what are you doing with that onion ring? It's not for skipping with. Get the razor blade and chop it. Your Uncle Hendreary only ever drank out of an acorn cup. And my family passed round a thimble. But, oh, once you've had a teacup... I could climb a curtain. Yeti clock. I could borrow. You don't know what it's like out there. What is it like? Your cousin Egultina went out once and she didn't... What happened to Egultina? Listen. Pa's back. Pod? One teacup. Oh, you got it. <laughs> got something else in my borrowing bag too. It matches. Did you go up the curtain? That's right. It's shaken you. Pod? Off you go to bed, Arietti. Oh. I'll bring you your supper. Can't I see the rest of the borrow? No, you've seen the cup and saucer. Take a candle. Oh, night, Pa. Mind you blow that candle out. What is it, Pod? Shut the door. I've been seen. You haven't, Pod. I said I have. No one hasn't been seen since Uncle Andrew. I know. He was the first in 45 years. I won't emigrate. Not when I've got our house so nice. No one's asking you to. A badger set. That's where Hendreary and Loopy said they were going to live. On the other side of the world. Two fields away, they said, by the spinning. Eating mice and earthworms. You've eaten mouse. Oh, think of Arietti. She's taught herself to read. She can sew. Two kids they've got. None of them can read. Look, Arietti would catch her death in all that fresh air. Who saw you? A boy. hasn't been a boy in this house for 20 years. There's one here now. Where were you? Halfway down the nursery curtain. With the cup? He was sitting up in bed. Oh, I should never have let you go, not at your age. I got up all right, like a bird. But coming down with a cup in my hand, some of the bobbles on the side of the curtain were missing. Well, you don't know what you've got to hold on to. He got out of bed and, I'll take the cup, he says. You gave it him? He took it. I got down. And he gave it back. He might have caught you. He gave me the saucer with it. Oh, what are we going to do? He doesn't know where we live. Yeah, but if they look, after Hendreary was seen, they got that cat and poor Eggletina. Eggletina was different. Same age as Arietti. They made Eggletina believe there was only under the floor. That's where they went wrong. No Mrs. Driver or Cramfurl or cats. We haven't told Arietti any different. We have. She knows about borrowing, and she's got the grating in the kitchen. She didn't know about Eggletina, about being seen. She doesn't need to know everything. She's not a little girl anymore. Is she? Arietti? Wait till morning, homily. Arietti! We'll tell her in the morning. The morning might be too late. What's happening? Arietti. Your father wants to talk to you. Homily. About 
Cats. Cats? Uh, not so much cats. And them two giants as live upstairs. She means Mrs. Driver and Crampfurl. Yes, and Uncle Hendreary. I thought he went abroad. Emigrated. With Aunt Loopy and the children. To a badger set, two fields away, they said. Now, why do you suppose they left this lovely house to go and live under a hedge? So they could lie in the sun and swing on twigs like birds. Ugh, dirty habits swinging on twigs. They emigrated because your Uncle Hendreary was seen. On the 23rd of April, 1892, by Rosa Pickhatchet. The maid. On the mantelpiece in the drawing room. She thought he was an ornament and dusted him with her feather duster. He'd have been all right if he hadn't sneezed. I don't bother with the drawing room. We heard her screeching from down here. There's a mint of things in there, but all locked up in a glass cabinet. Solid silver violin they've got there, Arietti. Just right for you. Well, couldn't you break the glass? Harry Yeti! You don't break things! Just a little bit in the corner. Breaking things isn't borrowing. Borrowing's an art. Do you know why we're the only borrowers left in this house, Harry Yeti? Because your father is the best borrower there's been since... since before your grandfather's Don't homily! Time. I have seen him walk the length of a late dinner table, taking a sweet from every dish, down by a fold in the tablecloth and out as the first people are coming in. We didn't get Arietti up to talk about that. He was younger then. She's shivering. Tuck this quilt around you. I'll get your soup. What do you see when you go outside this room, Arietti? A dark passage. And? Gates. Gates you can't open. What are they for? Against mice. Mice never hurt anyone. Rats. What about human beings? Or to keep you in. Here, drink this, love. I put it in the teacup. Upstairs is a dangerous place. And you're all we've got, Arietti. The Hendrearys have got two. Three they used to have. Your father's thinking of Equitina. They never told her about upstairs. They told her the sky was nailed up. She went out? In a blue dress and a pair of yellow kid boots your father made her. With jet beads for buttons. They never told her her father had been seen. And they got... They got... They got a cat in. A cat? A cat. And they waited, and they waited, and... No one saw Eggletina again. Your Uncle Hendreary never went upstairs again, in case he found those yellow kid boots. Did the cat... I've been seen, Arietti. By a boy. He was in the nursery, next to her bedroom. Will the human beings get a cat? Maybe. Can we emigrate? No, we can't. Worms and weasels and damp. What if I go out like Eggletina and the cat eats me? You'd emigrate there. I'll smack you in a minute, Arietti Claw. I bet that cat didn't eat Eggletina. <laughs> I bet she ran away because she hated being stuck under the floor with nothing to see except dust. And Eggletina had a brother and sister and a tame mouse and at least she got out once. Not so loud, Arietti. <laughs> It was different for you and me, Pod. We had more freedom. Where does freedom take you? And other borrowers. There's the sinks and, and the broom cupboard boys, the rain pipes. And where are they now? Might have bettered themselves. All gone. Suppose your father took you out borrowing, Arietti. Yes. I've been seen. You be careful. I never heard of a girl going borrowing. What if something happens to us? I'd need to know how to borrow then. If you had a son, you'd take him. We're all she knows. And what she's read in her book. Please, Pa. All right. When? Well, soon as good as later. So long as we know they haven't got themselves a cat. I'll take you tomorrow, Ariety. Tomorrow? You heard your father. Now. Off to bed. You'll need a clear head on your shoulders. Kiss your father good night. Night, Arietti. Good night, Pa. 
Good night, Ma. Oh. <laughs> Might stop her hankering. For what? Emigrating. So that's it. I am not emigrating, Pod, and that is final. <laughs> Always take three borrowing bags. I'll load them. In case we pick something up. A bad borrower loses many a chance for want of an extra bag. Made these gates myself. After Eggletina. This one locks with the safety pin. Yeah. You couldn't open this gate. You're too light. Nor could your mother. Never shut a gate on the way out. You might need to get back in quick. Right. Give me those borrowing bags. Oh, can we keep one? Oh, go on, then. Where are we? Underneath the grandfather clock. The clock that gave our family its name. This is our way out into the world. The world? There's the hallway. When I say... We'll run across the hallway to the front mat. Keep your eyes on me. Wait. Run. The stairs are like cliffs. Like what? They're big rock things that birds nest on. Don't stand in the middle of the hall, girl. I read about them in a book. Come over here. You're so small, Pa. I am not. A world above a world. Stop looking up. You'll get dizzy. We want fibres from this front doormat for your mother's scrubbing brush. Now you pull them out like this. And you put them straight in your bag. Now, if you have to run... Don't leave anything behind. It's your hands, doesn't it? <laughs> Not mine. It's dusty. The front door's open to the garden. Sit on the step, if you like. Oh, can I? If you sit still and keep your eyes peeled. The garden. I'm better on my own. It goes on forever. I can choose me bits. <laughs> the step's warm. Harrietty, what are you doing? I'm climbing down the shoe scraper. I said sit on the step, not climb down. What if one of them comes and moves it? How will you get back up? It's too heavy to move. Not for them. You've got to learn the rules, girl. Never climb down anything that isn't fixed. Could I run round to my grating and shout to Ma? Your grating? Must be just round that corner. Since when was it your grating? And you know I'm all right. I'm trying to do a bit of borrowing here. Please, Pa. Quick, then. I watch you. Ma! Ma! Not so loud! Ma! I'm at the grating! Arietti? I found round the corner! You, you should be running round corners. Mind while I throw this washing up water out. That's what grows the moss out here. Where's your father? Oh, the water we throw through the grating. I throw. Hurry, Etty. Don't see you doing any throwing. Oh, Pa's calling me. But run back and tell him to borrow a bit of red blotting paper to carpet the sitting room. Everyone's gone out except her. And she never gets out of bed. All right. And look where you're going. Pa! That's enough running about, Arietti. I saw Ma through the grating. Stay with me now. Ma says, can you borrow a bit of red blotting paper? Up the step with you. Oh, can I stay down? Oh, blotting paper is a curtain and chair job. She knows that. They're all out except Great Aunt Sophie, Ma says. She says what she likes when she wants something. I'll only go in the grass. What if Great Aunt Sophie gets out of her bed for once and comes down here with a stick? Just as far as those primroses. What if Mrs. Driver stayed at home with an headache? Or the tree with the pink flowers. The boy might still be here. Oh, please, Pa. Just to the cherry tree. 
just to the cherry tree. <laughs> Thank you. Hurry up, Steve. Stay under cover. Don't go near the birds. Or I'll... so friendly as they look behind the grating. Stay still. The boy. I'll hit you with my ash stick. I've been seen. Don't you come near me. You're coming near me. If you move, I'll hit you. Why? I don't want your little hands scratching me. Well, why would I do that? I've seen things do that in India. Well, this isn't India. Did you come out of the house? I'm not telling you. I'll hit you with my stick. I can see all your freckles. They're like orange moons. You're like a mountain dressed in a jumper. How old are you? Nine? Ten. I'm fourteen. Next June. Can you read? Of course. I'm bilingual. What's that? It means I can speak two languages. I was born in India. Can't you read then? Not yet. But I will. My sisters are bilingual, and they can read. I can read any book, if it's small enough. Why not big books? I can't turn the pages. I can turn pages. Stay here. I'll get a book. Will you go in the front door? I might. Uh, my pa's in the hall, working. I'll go in the side door. Are you a fairy? No. Are you? Of course not. I can't fly. <laughs> Nor can I. If you saw a little man, as tall as an old pencil, mm. halfway up the curtain with a doll's teacup in his hand, would you say he was a fairy? No, I'd say he was my pa. Are there many people like you? Of course there are. You don't think there are many like you, do you? I've seen your chairs. You couldn't make chairs that big for everyone. And pa told me about your food. Smoking heaps of potato and stew and soup. Do you eat soup? Of course we do. But not an ocean of it like you. If everyone wanted an ocean of soup, there wouldn't be enough to go round. My pa says it's a good thing you're dying out. We only need a few of you to borrow from. Borrow what? My pa borrowed two of her embroidered silk handkerchiefs. We have those as bed covers. And the cotton ones as sheets. Who's her? Great Aunt Sophie. Her who stays in bed all day. My pa's the best borrower in the world. He borrowed an emerald watch from her bedside table and a musical snuff box. But that got ruined when the kitchen boiler broke. All the water came down into our house and washed everything up against the grating. That's stealing. Borrowers don't steal. He can borrow anything from her. She talks to him. After her third glass of Madeira, she thinks he comes out of the decanter. I wish she thought I came out of the decanter. She sends for me in the morning when she's cross and asks Mrs D if I've learnt my words. What does Mrs D look like? She's fat and has a moustache and says she'll take a slipper to me. Well, that's not very nice. My mother's nice. She lives in India. And we're not dying out. So how come I only know of four human beings when I know of lots of borrowers? The overmantles and harpsichords and the rain barrels, the linen presses and boot racks. Do you know all of them? I don't know them. They were before I was born. How many have you met? Well, two except me. My mum and pa. Same here. I've only seen two borrowers, but I've seen hundreds of human beings. Liar! Why do we have railway stations then, with trains with hundreds of seats? And churches and cathedrals with thousands of seats. How can there be India and China and America if there aren't hundreds and millions of human beings to live there? I think you and your mother and father are the last borrowers in the world. What about Uncle Hendreary and Aunt Lupi and the cousins? I bet they're dead. And one day when your mother and father are dead, you'll be the last borrower left. Dead? You're crying. They said they were moving to a badger set two fields away. I'm going home. Don't! I haven't fetched the book. I'm not reading to you.
What if I find the badger set? So you aunt and uncle and the cousins? No. You can write them a letter. If they're alive, I'll tell you. Will you? Leave me the letter. Where in the house do you live? I'll leave it under the mat by the front door. Now can I go and get that book? All right. Back in a bit. Harrietty. Pause. What are you doing? Nothing. As far as the cherry tree, you said. I forgot. Come on. Your mother will have tea ready. Come in. Dear Uncle Hendreary. And what about my blotting paper? I told you I thought there were human beings about. I hope you are well. And the cousins. And Aunt Lupi. You didn't see any, did you? I had my feeling. We are very well. And I am learning to borrow. What are you doing, Arietti? Nothing. And I didn't have my pen with me. Your loving niece, Arietti Clock. Let me try to keep things nice. P.S. Write a letter on the back. Arietti, what are you doing? Writing my diary. I had my feeling real bad. What feeling? The feeling that human beings are near. I get mine in the back of my ankles. I don't get a feeling. That's why I brought her home. It'll come in good time. You try under the chute in our kitchen when Mrs. Driver's raking out the coals above. Stand on a stool, it'll come. He was up parking his best, going round the bank, scoring down holes. Where's your glass? Yeah, just a drop. How's the feeling coming? I don't know. Oh, don't stay on that stool too long. It's You'll get end. giddy. You told me to. Not for hours on end. I don't know what's up with you these days. Oh! oh. oh. Under, under the floor there, by your stone. Is the coals falling? Like that. You're a stool fall over. Yes. No good getting supper. Your father's gone borrowing to her room. You know what that means. He won't be back for an hour or two. Gossiping and poking about on the dressing table. It's safe enough once that boy's in bed. Not that we want anything special. But it's just these new shelves he's made look so empty. Where are you? To the storerooms. Well, don't mess anything. No. The horse belonged to my brother in Ireland. Her bedroom. She entered her for two or three point points. Have you ever seen a point point? No, I can't say I have. I'm pa talking to her. There are certain differences you can spot. In Next to Aunt Sophie's room, the nursery. Hello? Ah! Don't be frightened. It's me. What are you doing creeping around my room? I'm not creeping. Did you take the letter? When I brought the book, you'd gone. My pa called me. Did you take the letter? I looked under every mat for three days. Mrs. Driver said she'd take her slipper to me if I had them up again. Oh. I had to wait for my pa to take me borrowing. Then Cranford was spying on me. I went back to the badger soul twice. It's here. I don't want it back. Why did you bring it back? He's written on it. <gasps> They're alive. Did you see him? No, the letter was just where I left it. Oh, it's very faint. All in capitals. Did you write it? Of course not. <gasps> Tell Y O R E. Your. Your father, father, tell your father all is well. Arietti? Pa! I thought I heard your voice as I was coming out of her room. You best get home with me. I wrote to Uncle.
Uncle Hendreary and the boy took it. You wrote to him? And he wrote back. You'll have us borrowers finished off, my girl. The boy said we're the last borrowers and we're dying out. I'm trying to save us. Oh, what have you done, Arietti? Got in touch with the only other borrowers alive. We have to stick together. I am not living in a badger set with no water laid on. The boy knows where we live now. I, I never told him. You said. You told him about the boiler bursting and everything being washed up in our kitchen by the grating. He's only got to think. Borrowers have been seen before, but no human being has ever known where a borrower lives. We can go to Uncle Hendreary's. No! no. Because he knows about that, too. Oh, how could you, Arietti? A well-trained terrier or a ferret. Oh, I dare say I could have got it nice in the end. Oh, come and sit down, Normally. I'm putting my curlers in. No one's going to see you. At a time like this, who knows? What does your Uncle Hendreary say in his letter? He gives the address, the Badger's Set, Parkins Beck. What else? Um, he says... Tell your father all is well. All is well, living like savages. All is well, he says. Oh, you naughty, wicked girl. How could you start all this? I don't think human beings are as bad as you make out. They're bad and they're good. Animals would say the same if they could talk. You can never trust a human being. I got my feeling bad. Is that your mother? Uh, yes. It's the boy. Put it back. Put our roof back now. I've got this for you. The dresser. I got it from the doll's house in the nursery. The cupboard really opens. Does as well. And an armchair. Fit you, that would, Pod. Try it. Oh, look at it, Pod. Oh, go on, Pa. Just to try it. How is it? It's nice. What do you keep in that mustard pot? Coal. And these are my books. This is my diary and proverb book. It's little. My dictionary and Shakespeare's comedies. Why couldn't you read me that? I like reading new books. I'll put the roof back now. We're getting cold. Shall I nail you down? Of course nail us down. I've got some more things upstairs. Nail us down. Wait, what sort of things? From the old doll's house in the schoolroom, carpets and beds with mattresses and five gold chairs. Pod. I don't know, homily. Oh, Five gold chairs. Oh, t tell him to nail us down lightly, please, Pod. Uh, nail us down lightly. Uh, just a tap here and there. Dear Uncle Hendreary, how are you? Tell him about the maple wardrobes. We have got two. Maple wardrobe. Oh, we need another room for this grand piano. When have I got time to build another room? It's too close to the bureau. I haven't even got time to oh, go. Mention another... the bureau, Arietti. And a bureau. Not with all this furniture removaling. Tell him about the twisty legs. It's got curved <gasps> wooden legs. Then we could have the five gold chairs he talks about. We don't need five gold chairs. Oh, a stove in the kitchen, Arietti. Mother has a new stove in the kitchen. It doesn't work. It, it looks doesn't lovely. work, but looks lovely. Oh, and, and tell him you're learning the violin. I am learning the violin. It's only got one string. Should be easy then, shouldn't it? Your loving niece. We shouldn't be borrowing things from the drawing room cabinet. Don't you want your daughter to play an instrument? Arietti. Where is it going to end, homily? Have you told him about the cutlery? P.S. Go and count the spoons. If I find out you've been stealing from the drawing room cabinet... I haven't. A silver violin, a jewel snuff box, two china figures, and now a heart-shaped cashew box... 
Perhaps Aunt Sophie wanted them. And Sophie hasn't been downstairs in ten years. Whoever it is, I'll catch them. Just as well you're going at the end of the week. Going? Back to India. There's a boat and a family who've said they'll take you back to your parents. When? Friday. You ready for bed? Yes. Get in and make sure you stay there. I know someone's there. I heard the kitchen door creak. Where's the matches? What? The heart-shaped cashew box. And a light under the floor. I best get a knife. Nothing is. Bits of rubbish. That boy, I oh, shouldn't wonder. Nothing alive in there. I saw them. She saw us. Shh. Little people with hands. Oh, my stressed up. There's nothing there now. That's, that's a bed. One of them was in it. Remember that maid? Those are big hatching. That's what she saw. Little people. How about you go back to bed? And my silver temple. Potatoes, nuts. Here's where all the blotting paper goes. Oh, emerald watch. And it's still going. 25 past 12. Oh, pod. You know what this is? What is it? A case for the police. That's what this is. A case for the police. We've got to get out of here. I'll pack. No time. Where will we go? Look, I just get a few bits. Hello? It's that boy. We're here. Are we at you no. We hid in the passageway. Mrs. Driver's calling the police. I've got to get you out. Where to? The attic. That ain't no good. What about the doll's house in the nursery? Oh, yes. It's on the top shelf of the cupboard. How will we get down? We've got to eat. I can bring you food. You'll be here forever. I'm here till the end of the week. You're going? Friday. Oh, there's a dining room in the doll's house and a bathroom and stairs. Friday soon. I've got to go back to India. To my mother. We've got to emigrate. No. To the badger set. What about tonight? The doll's house tonight and the boy will take us to the badger set tomorrow. How? In his pockets. I'll bring the furniture afterwards. How will you get us upstairs? I'll carry you. In your hands. I'd rather stay here and get eaten by the police. I'll carry you in Mrs. Driver's peg bag. Good. Mind you, take the pegs out first. I bet the Hendrearies eat caterpillars. Don't be silly. Can you bring us some tea? I'll get a pound of tea and coffee and cooking pots and matches. Oh, and a couple of tins of sardines. And the carpets from the doll's house. I'll leave the peg back here and you can step in. In you get homily. Oh, oh, uh. Oh, Arietti. Oh dear. Ready? Yes. We're ready. Oh, oh, oh no! I can't! Um, I can't! I can't stop be it! Be quiet, oh, Homily. No, I can't! I can't! I'm dying! I'm dying! Tell him! Oh, tell him to put us down! Put us down! Oh, uh, just oh. for a moment. All right. Here. Oh. oh thank you. Oh. oh. Oh, that's better. But she's got to try. She will. Just take it slower. There isn't much time. Get back in. Listen. Back under the floor. Run. Don't go. What are you doing with the peg bag, boy? Nothing, Mrs. Driver. You black-hearted, fribbling little pickpocket. You know what they do with thieves? They lock them up. And that's what I'm going to do with you. I'm not a thief. 
I'm a borrower. A what? That's their name. They're borrowers. Well, they've done all the borrowing they'll do in this house. Nasty, scampy, squeaky things. Please, I'll move them out of the house. They'll be moved all right. Don't hurt them. The sanitary inspector will know how. And the police. And Cramfrill's old cat. And the rat catcher. And Tom good enough with his ferret. Once you've found the nest, the rest is easy. Back to bed, boy. You've a train to catch in the morning. What? All right, Amelie. What are we going to do? Ready? Yes? I'll get Cramfrill to bring your bags down. You look seasick already. Perhaps it's being locked in the nursery. I'll tell Aunt Sophie. I said you had a cold. Come on. What's that smell? The rat catcher is in the kitchen. Who moved the clock? One of the men. What's that axe for? They had the floorboards up in the drawing room. Let's go to the kitchen with ten minutes before your handsome cab's due. You want to see them caught, don't you? No, I do. He puffs this stuff in and they come running out, right in the duck's faces. You have to block up the other exits first. Come on. Steady, steady. The boy's just watching. He's going in a minute. Stand by. Steady. Ready to slip the dogs? Ready. Have your hands on their collars? That's the poison going in. That's it. Give it a minute to work through. There ain't much ventilation under a floor. Ventilation. Where are you going? I feel sick. Wait for me on the front step. The axe. That'll do it. If you're there, stand back. Stand back. Ariete, come out, please. Robert. Pod, homily. The handsome's here. Coming. Please. Robert. To the station. We're in a hurry. I want to be back for the death. Then what? Robert went back to India. What about the borrowers? He never saw them again. What happened to them? Do you know? Yes, I do. Did they escape? It's late, Ellen. Did Arietti live outdoors? Wash your face and clean your teeth, please. Did they find the Hendrarys? There's no time for a bath now. Tell me, Grandma. In the morning. That's not fair. Pajamas on. Just tell me a little bit. Fetch your toothbrush. Just one more sentence. Ellen. One more word. Bed. Oh. <laughs> Mary Norton's story, The Borrowers, was dramatised by Sarah Woods and starred Paula Wilcox as Homily Clock, Jeff Rawl as Pod Clock, Claire Corbett as Arietti Clock, Barbara Flynn as Kate, Angela Curran as Mrs Driver, Terence Booth as Crampful, and Lil Woods as Ellen. It was directed by Chris Wallace. <laughs> I thought you needed your sleep. Would you like a boiled egg? You said you'd tell me about the borrowers. Is that a yes to the boiled egg or no? Yes. Did they escape? Yes, what? Please, Grandma. There's toast on the table. Is it because it's bad news about the borrowers? Is that why you won't tell me? Because the rat catcher got them? <laughs> no. They escaped? They did. Through the grating? Through the grating, up the bank and across the orchard and away. Here's your egg. What did Homily think? What do you think Homily thought? Oh, oh no. I must sit down. You could sit down when we get to the stile. Oh no, just a moment, please, Todd. Take her other arm, Arietti. No. Keep her moving. We're almost at the stile. Oh, there's no call for all this running. Nobody saw us. For all they know, we're still we're still trapped under the kitchen floor. There was a face in the window when we went oh, on the bank. A boy with a cat or something. Tom, good enough. 
He's from the village, Cranthrill said. And it's not a cat, it's a ferret. I skinned. If you see anything, do exactly what I do. No running, no screaming. You think you know, but you don't, nor your mother. It's an art taking cover, like borrowing. Like I tried teaching you, Arietti. Look where that got us. But here's the style. Where you came from. I've no nonsense from you. Looking at me with your head on one side. I'm not a toadstool. It's going closer to him. Shoot! Get off with you. Go on. Oh. Oh. Pod, you were so brave. Just a oh. question of keeping your nerve. You'd never guess a crow was so Big when you see it in the sky. I would have got the half nail scissor out. Talking works best with crows. You should have a medal, Pa. I should have taken cover, like you and your mother. Too busy talking. Well, I'm having a sit down. Get under the stile. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh. For the moment. That's the field. Oh. Parkins Beck. Where the Andrews live. Where the badger set is. That's it. Uh, where? Somewhere. I thought you knew. I brought you this far, haven't I? Isn't there a stream? Well, um, down at the bottom. Flows along that hedge. Let's sort these loads. What's in your bag, Arietti? Oh, uh, three pill bottle lids. Good. Uh, a piece of candle. Change of underclothes. Yes. Jumper. Pencil and my diary and proverb book. What did you haul that along for? She's got to keep up with her writing, Pod. How about you, Homily? Oh, uh, oh, knitting needles, an old sock, uh, three lumps of sugar, mm. oh, salt and pepper, half a digestive biscuit, mm. bit of tea, chip of soap, and me hair curlers. Uh, I brought the uh, half scissor. A sliver of razor blade. I've got my shoemaking kit. Aspirin bottle with water in. Oh, I didn't think of that. Fuse wire and two hat pins. Like as not we brought the wrong things. I'm thirsty. Oh, me too. I thought we'd get to that badger's set and have a nice cup of tea. We'll find them in the morning. It'll be dark soon. Sun's nearly off that hill. The clouds are coming up. Oh, not rain. We'll move fast. I Give me your bag, homily. Oh, where are we going? To find shelter. We'll have to sleep rough tonight. What sort of shelter? The hedge might do. Not much shelter in a hedge. It'll be dark soon. Isn't that an old boot? An old what? Where? By the tree stump. I'll have a look. Have you gone out of your mind? You two wait under that dock. Oh. Oh, sleeping where a great stinking foot's been. Smell that. What? The boot? Oh. Strawberries. Come on! He's calling us. Homily! We can't go out in this. Arietti! Run! <laughs> oh, the mud! Find the nettles. Oh. I'll pull it in here. There's a hole in this tree stump. Oh. Get in. Oh! <laughs> I wish I knew who wore it. What difference would that make? I'd know if he was dirty or not. Go farther in. Oh, there might be something in the toe. Just a hole? I looked. What if he died of something infectious? He might be hale and hearty and sitting down to his tea at this minute. Oh, tea. Where's the candle pod? Here. Yeah. Give me a medium-sized lid, Arietti. Now go careful with the tea. Well, there's room between the hole in the toe and the tree stump for a storeroom. Pass me the half scissor, Arietti. Ah. I'll give this boot a good clean in the morning. And the hat pins. They can go out in the storeroom too. What are you doing, Arietti? I'm going to write my diary. Oh. What's the proverb for today? 
might cheer me up. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. No, it didn't. was for a minute. You're inside a sock. <laughs> inside a boot. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Arietti? In between us. She ain't pod. She's gone. <laughs> well, she, she can't be far. Arietti! You're shouting! What if something's eaten her? If it hears you shouting, it'll eat us too. Oh, why does she do these things. Morning. Oh, Arietti Clock. I've got some strawberries for breakfast. Where, Where have you been? In the hedge. We were out of our minds worrying. I put them on a violet leaf for a plate. Don't go off without saying where you're going, how long and what for. I don't always know what for. I'll give you what for. You could have shouted. No shouting, your pa says. Danger on all sides. What danger? Come out here. Look at that sky. See that bird up above us? Mm -hmm. well, it's sort of hanging. You know what it is? What? Sparrowhawk. Oh. It'd dive down and grab you before you could take a breath. Oh. Danger's everywhere. In front and behind, above and below. Oh, sooner we get out of this old tramp's boot, the better. This is no tramp's boot. Not a working man's boot, neither. Well, thank goodness for that. What's wrong with a working man's boot? Pa's a working man. I it's a question of quality, Arietti. This is quality, all right. As fine a bit of leather as ever I laid my fingers on. And hand-sewn. A gentleman cares for his boots, you see. Well greased and dubbined. If it hadn't been, it never stood up to all the wind and rain and sun and frost. Oh, pass me a strawberry, Arietti. I say we were lucky to find such a fine boot. Mm. Apart from the hole in the toe... I can patch that up with a bit of leather from the tongue. No, oh, it's not worth a thread, Pod. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're going to live in a boot. I mean to say, we've got relations in this field. Maybe. We have. Uncle Andreary answered my letter. Relations or no relations, they're still borrowers. And who ever seen a borrower? That boy did. Yeah, only because you went right up to him. You sought him out, Arietti. Shameless. I told you what had happened. I said no good comes from human beings. I said it'd be the end of us. Oh, Pod. I like it here in this boot. I'll have no more nonsense from you, Arietti. You hear that, Arietti? Not from your mother, neither. Oh, there won't be no nonsense from me, Pod. This is how it strikes me. Human beings is tall, right? Right. Yes. And they move fast. We move fast? But look at the ground they cover. Their legs are so long. Now, if human beings can't find borrowers, most of them don't even believe we exist, how can we expect to do any better? It seems to me that borrowers is hid from borrowers. Oh, no, Pod! We don't say we <gasps> won't find the Hendrearies. Maybe we will. Before the winter, anyways. Winter? We need a plan. We've got a plan. With a main object. To find our relations. We'll work our way right round the field by the edges. Hedges. There's hedges and edges, Arietti, and I mean edges. When do we start? As soon as we've had breakfast. Mm. I've had mine. <laughs> Here's yours, Pa. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Mm. I might have a bit of that mm. digestive biscuit now. Hmm. It's almost as far to go back as to keep on. Oh, pass me another rose hip, Arietti. Oh, yeah. How about we go right round? Round the whole field? What do you say, Homily? Oh, we better keep going. <coughs> you said you'd clean the hairs out of these, Arietti. I did. Yeah, so <coughs> why am I choking my head off? Well, I must have missed one. <coughs> the cornfield. 
How about collecting a few ears of corn? It's downhill all the way back now. Well, no harm. <laughs> If it walks out and follows us, corn isn't heavy. We can put it aside for winter. And nuts. Dig a pit to bury them in. Oh, winter? We've got to face it, Amelie. We've got to save the candle and the matches for the cold weather. No more hot food, no more tea. We have to live different. No more tea? Except for celebrations and emergencies. Oh. I take a bit of the stalk, too. Makes it easier to carry. There's plenty of nuts. We've got to look about us and see what there is. And the blackberries are coming on. Ah. I'm not eating caterpillars. We can milk aphids like ants do. <laughs> ah! What's that? A beetle. The beetles don't hurt. Oh, oh shoot, 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 shoot. I just don't like the look on their faces. We can grind this corn for bread. Oh, how am I going to make bread without an oven or yeast? Can you manage all that? Well, I'd sooner carry it than grind it. We'd best get back before sunset. Oh. Oh. Might find the Hendrearies before that. There won't be no badgers set along this side. Oh, why not? Too much ploughing and sowing of men and dogs. Where could one be then? We've walked nearly all the way round. Only one place to look now. Them trees in the middle. Oh. Open ground. You don't need to come. Suppose we have a nice cup of tea when we get back to the boot. What you have now, you can't have later, homily. Might not be a later. <laughs> You know, another ten minutes, it would have been dark. Wait there. I'll undo the laces. Where shall I put the corn? We can stack it in the storeroom next to the boot. Oh, Righto. Oh. Bring the half scissor, Ariete. It isn't here. Of course it is. Where? I can't see it. Get a match and light the candle. Something's been mucking about in our store. It was there. What? The half scissor. The larger hat pin's gone too. Oh, the smaller hat pin's here. Everything except those two things. What kind of a creature would take a half scissor? A magpie might, if it was shiny. I don't see a magpie taking a hat pin. Or a human being. It's more in the style of a... of a borrower. The Hendrieries! Maybe. Put some water on to boil, Arietti. No point wasting the candle. We said no tea. We're celebrating finding the Hendrieries. Say it was one of the Hendrieries. They know our gear. Why didn't they stay to see us or, or leave a note or a sign? Well, maybe he went to tell the others. They took our weapons. Not the smaller hat pin. Make tea if you want, but I wouldn't call this a celebration. Not yet. But could we say it's a grave emergency? Oh! 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 Get it out! Get the hat pin! I put the candle out! Oh! oh. There! It's out! Gone. Where? An owl got it. Oh, water's all spilt! No more candles after sunset. Careful you don't fall in, Arietti. You've only got one change of clothes. What could we use a bulrush for? Mm. Could have used one at home to clean the flues out. I knew it would end like this. Didn't I tell you when you wanted to emigrate? It's what I dreamed of. We won't see another spring, Arietti. We wouldn't have at the house with that rat catcher. The boy was right. This is the end of the borrowers. Our time has come. I'll fetch that horse hair from the hedge. Once your pa's back, I think we'll have a nice cup of tea. Tea's for celebrations only. But there'll be no celebrating when we're dead and gone. Might as well enjoy it while we can. Pa might have found the badger's set. I'll get the dinner. Oh, not that there's anything to get. But there's sorrel and dandelion for a salad. Arietti, don't go too high. The horse hair's only about halfway up. Be careful. Borrowers are made for climbing. Yeah, I'll go and get the kettle on. Mind you, don't fall and break your leg. I'll come here when it's windy.
windy, when the whole hedge is alive and swaying in the wind. What a world. Thing after thing. I might have lived and died hidden under a floor. There it is. Uh, oh! Ah! <laughs> that frightened you. I thought it was a twig. It's my hand. Who are you? Spiller. You're filthy. You're cross. Where do you live? Here and there. How old are you? Don't know. You're a borrower, aren't you? Don't know. Well, are you a boy or a grown-up? Don't know. Do you wash? Wash what? I'm going home. Look out! <coughs> <coughs> don't you want this horse hair? No. That boot's comfy, isn't it? I don't know. Haven't you ever seen a moth before? You shouldn't have been watching. <laughs> it's our home. Quiet. What's that? Bow and arrow. Why? Mouse. Where? There. Oh. You killed it. <laughs> Got to eat. Oh, you're horrid. Who isn't? I wouldn't touch it. Don't you eat meat? We did in the house. Where do you think it came from? Well, not mice. Some animal. Want a bit? Fair's fair. Hit or miss. I take less than the owl. Hear that? What is it? A cricket. Want to see it? Oh, I don't know. Come here. Uh, <laughs> if you stroke between its wings, it sings nice. He looks very angry. Go on. Stroke it. Would you like it as a pet? A pet? Arietti? Yes? Oh, did you get that horse here? Here's Spiller. Here's what? I got a cricket. Oh, don't you bring that thing in here? It sings. Look. No, oh, it's coming for me. Mom. Then get it out, get it out. Mom. Get it away, it's a beetle. It's a cricket. Oh, you better leave the mouse outside. It's a present. Get it out. Dirty, naughty boy! Get out and get that thing out! Lucky my husband's not here! You take your beetle! It's a cricket, Mother! I'll take no, it away! No! Oh, I'd never let me see you here again! You made him go! Oh, what does he want? Flinging beetles around! He's a borrower like us! Oh, see, he's a dirty boy! I bet we wake up one morning with our throats cut! Oh, oh. He's the type to steal a hat pin! Oh, oh, here's your pa. Thank goodness for that. You might have found the Hendreries. Oh, Pod. Did you find them? Sit down, Pod. Are you all right, Pa? I'll make us a, a cup of tea. Hobbly, slow down. Did you find the badger set? I found it. And? They've left. Or been eaten. Oh. It's full of foxes. Oh, what will we do? We can stay here. Oh, what all winter with no heat by the end of a candle. What will we live on? There's nuts and grains. Oh, with that urchin flinging beetles. It was a cricket. What? Spiller. Stealing the half scissor and the hat pin. You don't know he stole them. Do Spiller. He's a borrower, Pa. Another borrower? Like us, living outside. We'll talk to him. We'll end up like him if we don't die from too much raw food. Shh, listen. I can't take any more. Something's out in the store. No, no, don't go out, Pod. I've got to go look. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Take the hat pin, Pa. Wait there. Dang it. Dang it. I don't want to know. What is it? Field mouse. Eating the corn. We need some sort of tin. Cocoa tin would do. Put our winter supplies in. And some sort of shutter to hide us. Needs to let the light in. What about that branch hanging down? Could hook some twine around it. The leaves would cover us over. Pass me the twine. <clears throat> Spiller saw what happened with the moth. Won't be happening again once we got this screen. Take hold and pull. Gently does it. Gently, gently. <sighs> We're doing it. The branch is bending down. Not too fast or it might snap. Now, hold on while I loop it over this root. Right. Yeah. There. Oh. 
It's fast. Oh. And we're covered. How's that for an idea? It's wonderful. <laughs> and we can still see out. We can let it up and down, depending on what goes on. Down when it's raining or windy. Won't keep mice out and that kind of cattle, but there'll be no more watching. That's a donkey. Must be somewhere nearby. Well, there's a lane just below the spinney. I saw it from the top of the hedge. It's tied up there on a bit of grass. Well, that'll be common land. And someone's tethered a donkey there. Nothing wrong with that. Donkeys don't eat you. And there's a dog and human beings in a caravan. That's what we need. Some sort of human habitation oh. where there's fires and pickings, hot potatoes and meat. Mm. <laughs> there's the owl. Looking for his supper. Spiller's got a bow and arrows. He killed a field mouse. Not worse dinner than corn-fed mouse stew. I'd like to meet this Spiller. Pa? Mm -hmm. I'm glad we came, whatever the danger. We go home to the house party. No, we can't. All these pips and whores and dogs and foxes and creepings in the night and nothing to cook on. We could have things straightened out in a few days back home. The rat catcher can't wait forever. You don't know what you're saying, Homily. But we got it nice again after that boiler burst. We can do it again. They'd be waiting for us. They've got the cat. They'll have set traps, laid down poison. And it's not just that, Homily. You don't go back. Not once you've come out from under. But it's our home. We haven't got a home. That's all over and done with. Like it or not, we've got to go on now. We must say we're not up against it. We are right up against it. More than I like to let on. But if we don't stick together, we're finished. Let me never hear another word from you about going back anywhere, let alone under the floor. Now, I'll start on that fishing net. Look at them shadows. Must be after two. What could have happened to Arietti? Playing by the stream, I should think. There and back, without dawdling, I told her. She knows not to dawdle. Yeah, that's where you're wrong, Pod, with Arietti. You've got to say it to her every time. She's going on 14. She's young for her age. You've got to tell her or she makes excuses. Oh, you hungry, Pod? What is there? Bunch of whores, couple of nuts, oh, and a mildewed blackberry. All right. But which one? Nut is more filling. But what can I do with it? I could try and find us a couple of wild strawberries. Oh, now that's an idea. They're a bit scarce now. Yeah, and something's been at them. Birds, maybe. More likely, that spiller. Listen. What was it? Voices. Oh, what kind of voices? Human. Oh, pod. Quiet. <gasps> what are you doing? Pulling the screen down. Oh, what about Arietti? Get a smaller hat pin from the store. Here it is. Oh, Who are you? It's that dirty boy. How did you get in? Through the door. Oh. You're the borrower. I'm Spiller. The gypsies are rabbiting. Where's Arietti? I floated her down the river. You what? In a soapbox. Oh. They've got caravans down by the lane. Oh, no. They're going across the cornfield. What about Arietti? He said something about a soap dish. Box, not dish. Is she safe? I slept in this boot once. What happened to Arietti? She was playing in the mud by the stream. Creeping up on a frog and hitting it with a bulrush. Oh, silly girl. She didn't notice the gypsy's dog watching her. I was in my boat, so I pushed her in it and set her off downstream. Why didn't you get in? Isn't room for two. He saved her life. And risked his own. Only he's here and she's not. He's a hero. Oh, sit down. I'll get you a nice half a rose hip. I got this. <clears throat> oh, meat. What kind of meat? Oh, I don't want to know. It's cooked oh. with a bit of wild garlic. Mm. Well, let's just eat it. Mm. Too large for a field mouse. Mm. 
Oh, lay a little by for Arietti. <laughs> Too small for a rabbit. Ma, Arietti. Oh, you all right? Oh. Oh, sit down, love. He spun me in the current. I had to get you away from the edge. He saved your life. That dog would have swallowed you whole. He went round and round. You should thank him. Thank you, Spiller. There's some meat for you here. Oh, meat? And I brought this. Oh, what is it? Hair wash? Elderflower wine. I was brought up teetotal. I don't mind having a half hazel shell. Mild Eye makes it in a watering can. Who? The gypsy who had this boot. Oh, you said this was a gentleman's boot. It is. Was. Mild Eye picked the pair up at that big house. Our house. By the scullery door. A gypsy. Sounds like a good borrow. And who borrowed it off Mild Eye? Mild Eye's got a cat. One night it's yowling and Mild Eye heaves this boot at it. Have a sip, homily. So I get hold of it, drag it through the hedge, sail downstream and bring it aground in the mud. Where we found it. Oh, it's very warming. Mm. You know, I, I might have a little more. Me too. I bet he was mad in the morning. You should have heard him. With one boot on. Oh, you're not going, Spiller. Things to do. Well, what things? I'm getting me winter clothes. New ones? A lady makes them. What lady? Someone. Fur? Rabbit? Mole. To Spiller's new clothes. Mm, Spiller's new clothes. Oh, he's gone. Poor motherless boy. He could have stayed. Mm. He could have gone tomorrow. Spiller, I'll say. He had a mother. How else does he know his name? Mm, that's true. Spiller's <laughs> his surname. His first name's Dreadful. Oh, Dreadful. That's what his ma said. You're a dreadful spiller. Dreadful, I'll say. You should have a mother. Oh, I'll have a drop more of that elderflower wine. It's all gone. Oh, pod. <laughs> He's asleep. <laughs> oh. What is it, Ariete? Someone's singing. Who? I don't know. We didn't lace the boot up last night. <laughs> what smoke? Shall I look? We'll look together. Right. Take it slowly. There's another boot. The same as ours. They're a pair, all right. Where are we? In a caravan. A pair? I reckon that's... Mild Eye the Gypsy. Oh, he's big. He is. Even for a human being. He's coming. Get your head down. Oh, he's getting his boots. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What's happening? Oh, quiet. Oh, if he puts his foot, he'll squash us. Oh. Stay out of the toe. Mild Eye. Oh, oh. oh everything's oh. spinning. Oh, I shouldn't have had that elder for a while. Oh, 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 oh. What's he doing? He's shaking it. Stay in the shadows. Don't move. Don't be so silly. Is that a, a cat? Yes. My old eyes looking in the boot. Look, 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 look. Oh, oh thanks. thanks. They're things. <laughs> the cat has seen us. It can't get under here. We're dead. Not yet. Mild Eye knows we're here, but she won't believe him. They've gone. Yeah. We're on our own. Oh, except for the cat. He must have come round the field at dusk, setting his rabbit snares. Is that what they're cooking, do you think? And found his boot. Rabbit. Like as not. 
Oh, it smells good. We should have pulled down the screen before we went to bed. Didn't even lace up the boot. Rabbit stew, I reckon. Bottle at night and you're out like a light. Is that out of your diary book, Arietti? No. No. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm both. Oh. Shut your eyes and think of something else. When I shut my eyes, I see a nice hot thimble full of tea. And our oak apple teapot with a quill spout on our dining table at home. Oh, look at all the fluff under here. If I'd built this caravan, I'd have had the bed go right down to the floor so no dust could gather. Just as well you didn't build it. Oh. At least that cat hasn't seen us. <gasps> oh, he has now. We can't get under here. At least we could die indoors. What is that cat doing? Uh, it's the little people. It's something. Uh, they're under oh. the bed. They'll see us. Don't move. Hello, Tom. Shh, 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 shh. What's up with Moyle Knight? He's seeing things. <gasps> Not a ferret, is it? Mm, little people. <laughs> he reckons he's got a couple of little people under the bed. Mm. Is that boy from the house? What sort of little he people? He went back to uh, India. That, high they were. A woman, that one? Men, the one with the ferret, the, the one looking out of the window when we left. Mind if I see? Get to the back of the bed. There you are. He's seen us. His pocket is moving. Devil he's meant to be with his ferret. Oh, we're finished. Quiet. We might as well sing and shout. How are you going to get them? Oh. Take out the bed. <laughs> We've had it. Sing then. What will you do when you catch them? Put them in this birdcage to keep them. <laughs> Sell them. Oh, dear. Better the cage than the ferret. Better the ferret. We should get the cat out. Try will hold him. Try. Try. He's reaching into his pocket. <gasps> Pod. Yes, Homily. I've tried to be a good wife to you. You have been. He's taking it out. A bit sharp sometimes. I'm not perfect neither. He's got it in his hand. I'm sorry, Pod. I'm sorry too. Make from my pocket. Do you hear me? He's putting it down. It's not a ferret. What are you waiting for? <gasps> His spear! What? Spear! You heard him get in his pocket. Ma! No, no, he wants me to run out there over his trouser leg and into his pocket. You do as he says. I'd sooner perish. Take him by the wrist, Spiller. No! Run! No! Oh, he's like that pet bag! There oh. they are! Oh. You have to pick her up. Got her! Got her! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hold your hand. Hand them over. No! Hey! Boy, you've got to there to eat. You're not putting them in a cage. They have wealth a fortune. They're not yours to sell. Back, come back. You all right, homily? Oh, my leg's gone oh. numb. Not broken, is it? Oh, oh, I can't feel nothing in it. Can you move it? Ow! No. If it's the one you're pinching, it's mine. Oh, and what's this? That's mine too. It's a large hat pin. He has got our hat pin, but Not I'll... now, homily. Oh, I bet he's got our nail scissor too. Spiller has just saved our lives. Everything all right, Spiller? Yeah. Which one's homily? The noisy one. <sighs> you're all right, homily. This pocket's full of crumbs. Oh, ah! Oh, get oh. those grubby oh. fingers out! Oh. We'd like to have a look at them. Leave them be, Tom. OK. <sighs> Where's he taking us? To his cottage, over the hill. Lives there with his grandpa. Well, what sort of a boy is he? I heard of a borrower who was kept in a tin box with, with holes in the lid and fed with an eyedropper. Not that sort of boy. Loopy's uncle, that was. Loopy? And my aunt. I know Loopy. What? Is she and I? Of course. She makes my winter clothes. Oh, we thought she left home. Nearly there now. How about Hendreary and the cousins? They're all here. I can smell an indoor smell. This is his cottage. We've arrived. Well, where do they live, the Hendrieries? Here. Here? We're here. Oh, 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 oh. he's got grubby fingers again. Oh. Let him lift you out. Oh. I'll go first. Oh. Oh. oh, that boy should clean his nails. Quiet, homily. Who's next? Me. Oh. Oh. Crumbs in my shoes. Do you want to get off or shall I put you down? I'll get off. Oh. 
Thank you. You'll be all right now. Oh, oh. oh. Where's Spiller? Oh, oh, never again. He'll be back. Oh, very decent of you. <laughs> I've got six altogether behind the skirting board. Well, six what? Borrowers. Some of them I haven't seen. Too scared to come out. I'm not. You behave yourself. Nor Spiller. Here he is. Loopy won't come out. You better take them in. Behind this wood box, there's a hole in the skirting board. This way. Single file. Oh, I don't like it. Up here. What, up that ladder? I'll go next. Is it safe? Don't look down. They're here, Loopy. Is my hair all right? You look lovely. Oh, well, here they come. And dreary. Come on in, Pod. Holly. <laughs> Loopy. Oh, I thought you'd left home. Oh, Holly. Oh, poor thing. Children, this is your cousin, Arietti. Hello. Hello, Arietti. Hello. Look at the state of you. Now, where's Eggletina? What, Eggletina? Yeah. I thought she was eaten by a cat. Yes. Oh, nearly. <laughs> oh, she was living in a bucket in the orchard when we found her. Oh, oh. Eggletina. She's oh. just gone off. Oh, oh. Slept away. Always been like that. Oh. What a lot of furniture you've got, Loopy. Oh, well, the boy brought it for us from the big house. He said it was thrown out of a doll's house. They've got our furniture, Pod. Don't worry about that now. The dresser's very oh, useful. That's my dresser. I keep all the cups and plates in it. <gasps> Sit down in that gold chair, if you like. Oh, thank oh, you. We've got five. Poor dear Loopy. Who helps you with all the dusting? Where's Spiller? Gone off. Where? Home. But we haven't thanked him. Spiller doesn't hold with thanks. When will he be back? He doesn't come back much. He must be lonely. Oh, not lonely. Some borrowers are made that way. Like Eggletina. Solitary. Always draw the line at night. Perhaps that's what I am. Of course. Now come and sit down. Dinner will be ready in a minute. (laughs) Homily. Everything they've got was ours. Oh, everything. Every single blessed thing. That red velvet chair, the dresser with the painted plates, all that stuff that boy brought us from the doll's house. Not the keyhole stove. Look, look on the table. Oh, the dining table. They've made that from a door plate. The imitation leg of mutton and the dish of plaster tarts. That sofa was ours and the palm plant in a pot. Findings keepings, Amelie. Oh. As far as they knew, we were dead and gone. Now come and have your dinner. Oh. Arietti? There's plenty of food. In a we minute. Like pretend. <laughs> Very kind. Oh, lovely. So, come this way no. then. So many people. So many rules and it's so closed up and hot. If I don't do it now, I might never dare. And she took hold of the ladder put her foot on the first rung and climbed back down to the sitting room. Why? Maybe she wanted to be on her own, out in the world, not shut up behind the wall or under the floor. How do you know how Arietti was feeling? What do you think this is? Arietti's diary. That proves it. That proves everything. Where did you find it? Here. Arietti was here. This is the house Tom Goodenough brought them to. The cottage in the wood. Is she here now? No. All this happened a hundred years ago. Have you ever seen one here? No. I suppose I hope there aren't any borrowers left. Why? No, I don't like to think there are people so frightened in the world that they have to hide. No. I'd rather think that if there are borrowers, they've grown as tall as we are. What about my hair bubble? I don't know. If they did still exist, and if I ever met one, I'd show them how not to be afraid. I'm going to get dressed. Like Tom did. You look tired. I'm fine. I won't be long. I tell them to stand up tall. Hello. Hello.
The Borrowers by Mary Norton. Homily Clock was played by Paula Wilcox with Pod Clock by Jeff Raw and Arietti Clock by Claire Corbett. Kate was played by Barbara Flynn, Mrs Driver, Angela Curran, The Boy, Sam Rawl, Crampfurl, Terence Booth and Ellen, Lil Woods. It was dramatised by Sarah Woods and directed by Chris Wallace.